Today I'm going to share with you all of my top tips for using alcohol markers. If you're a beginner, you'll definitely want to watch all the way to the end of this video because these tips are all the things that I wish someone had explained to me back when I was first learning how to use alcohol markers over 10 years ago. Especially tip number 6, which when I figured it out was a real breakthrough for me. Paper plays a really important role in your experience of using alcohol markers. In some cases, it can really make or break your entire experience because the paper needs to have the right kind of texture and absorbency to handle the alcohol markers well. With the wrong kind of paper, you'll experience things like bleed through, feathering, pilling or tearing of the fibers of the paper, or the markers will just be really difficult to blend. But with the right kind of paper, all of those problems are just non-existent. Your markers will blend smoothly and you'll be such a happy camper. So I strongly recommend using paper that's labeled for use with alcohol markers. These days, there are a lot of different brands to choose from, so I'll tell you about my favorites and I'll post the links in the description below. I love to use Express It Blending Card because it's so easy to create smooth blends on this paper. Smooth Bristol Board is another excellent option, as well as these papers by Strathmore and Canson. If you're on a budget, then a cheaper alternative are these Ahuhu marker sketchbooks, where you get more sheets of paper for the price. But if that would also stretch your budget a bit too far, then the cheapest option is to use cardstock, which I did for many years. My go-to brand was Nina Exact Index Bright White 110 pound cardstock, but any brand of white cardstock will probably do the trick just fine. Now in terms of which papers to avoid, stay away from regular printer paper because it's usually way too thin, so the marker ink will feather. The ink will spread very quickly and spread farther than you intended it to, which makes it hard to create blends while staying within your lines. Drawing paper can also have this problem because most drawing paper is meant for use with dry media, like graphite and colored pencils, so most drawing paper can't handle the ink and alcohol markers very well. Also, I'd advise you to stay away from watercolor paper because watercolor paper is really absorbent, so the alcohol marker ink will quickly sink into the paper, which can make it really hard to create a smooth blend, and it also uses up a lot of ink. Also, depending on the texture of the watercolor paper, it might be prone to pilling from the constant back and forth rubbing of the marker nibs on the paper. This is actually two tips in one. The speed at which you use your alcohol markers is important, so you'll need to both color slowly and color quickly. I know that sounds totally contradictory, so let me explain. If you color too quickly, the results will be streaky. Alcohol markers blend while the ink is damp, so you need to color slowly enough to saturate the paper enough that the colors will lay down smoothly and blend together well, and that way you'll avoid streaks. But you also need to color quickly enough that the ink doesn't dry out before you've finished blending. Because if the ink is too dry, the colors won't blend together as well. This is why it's best to use alcohol marker paper, because it's specially coated to stay damp for longer, enabling the alcohol marker ink to blend together. So while it might sound contradictory to color both slowly and quickly, the more you get accustomed to using your alcohol markers, you'll understand what I mean, and it'll be so intuitive that you won't even need to think about it. If you're serious about using alcohol markers, then you definitely want to create a color chart so that you can quickly and easily match the color name on the cap to the actual color. This will also help make it so much easier to choose colors for blending because you can look at all the colors that you have at a glance. You can assess them and compare them and choose which ones you want to try blending together. If you don't have a color chart, then you're basically starting from scratch each time you want to pick the right color for a certain area or for a specific blend, and that can be time consuming. So having a color chart is an incredible time saver. Many alcohol marker brands include a blank color chart in their sets of markers, or you can often find their blank color charts online and print them out. Another alternative is to simply swatch and label the colors in your sketchbook. In my ultimate guide to using alcohol markers, you can download my custom color charts for Copic and Ahuhu, where I've organized the colors according to what they actually look like, placing similar colors next to each other. This helps make it so much easier to choose colors for blending. I'll post the link to my ultimate guide to using alcohol markers below this video. 
Once you've found some colors that you feel blend together really well, make a note of it. One idea is to keep a sketchbook where you keep track of your favorite color combos for blending. Here's an example of how I keep track of my favorite blends in my sketchbook. When you note down your favorite blends like this, it's a huge time saver in the long run. Over time, you might have your favorite blends memorized without even needing to think about it. But until then, writing them down is a really good idea. I also encourage you to experiment with blending different colors to see what happens. If you're new to Copics, you might have heard about Copic blending formulas, where you blend together colors that are from the same color family and share the same first number and their last numbers are within two to three digits of each other. However, you can get much more dynamic results if you blend together colors that don't follow those rules. For example, here are some blends that do follow the Copic blending rules, and here are some blends that don't. You can see right away which blends are more visually appealing. If you need some inspiration for your Copic blends, I share over 250 of my favorite Copic blends in my ultimate guide to using alcohol markers. When you're working with alcohol markers, it's always best to plan your colors and blends in advance on a spare piece of paper before putting color onto your actual artwork. I do this all the time for just about every single piece of alcohol marker art that I create. I either plan my colors on a spare piece of paper or I print out a copy of my artwork and test my colors and blends on the extra printout. The reason it's so helpful to plan your colors and blends in advance before you put them on your artwork is that it can help you avoid mistakes. With other media, like acrylics for example, if you make a mistake, you can just paint over it. But alcohol markers aren't forgiving like that, and it's really hard, if not impossible sometimes, to correct big mistakes. So pre-planning your colors is the best way to go. The next thing that I really want you to know is that there is no one single correct way to blend. There are many different ways of blending alcohol markers and they're all valid. Let me explain. I'm gonna focus now on something that really confused me when I was a complete beginner because I kept coming across contradictory information. When I was first learning to blend, I came across videos and blog posts where people claimed that the best way to blend was to go from dark to light, and they said that blending the opposite way from light to dark was incorrect. But at the same time, I also came across other videos and blog posts where other people claimed the exact opposite, that blending from light to dark is the correct way and the other way is incorrect. So I was totally confused because both groups of people were creating beautiful art, and you couldn't tell who blended which way. So I experimented with blending both ways, and I learned that it's totally okay to blend whichever way you want. Whether you want to blend from light to dark or dark to light, it's totally up to you. So I encourage you to try blending light to dark and dark to light and see which way feels most comfortable to you and yields the results that you want for your style of art. In general, blending from light to dark is easier for beginners because it's always easier to make an area darker than it is to lighten a dark area. If you accidentally make an area too dark, then it's really hard, if not impossible, to make that dark area lighter in a way that still looks good. So the benefit of blending from light to dark is that you can go darker gradually and assess as you go along whether you want to make it even darker. Blending from light to dark can use up a bit more ink than going from dark to light. So when you become more experienced with blending and more familiar with your colors, then blending from dark to light can save you some time and ink. If you want to create an underpainting with your alcohol markers, then blending from dark to light is the best method for doing that. In my cherries video here on YouTube, you can watch as I demonstrate how to do this. If you're enjoying these tips so far and finding them useful, it would mean a lot to me if you tap the like button. You can also subscribe to my channel to see more of my art videos. Alcohol markers blend best when the markers are really juicy and full of ink. When the markers become dry, it's really hard to create smooth blends. So if the brand of markers that you're using offers ink refills, you'll want to top them up with ink whenever they start to go dry. When it comes to refilling your alcohol markers, one of the best tips that I've picked up is to use a scale to weigh your markers, so you'll know exactly how much ink to add. For example, a Copic sketch marker usually weighs between 14 and 14 and a half grams when it's completely full of ink, with both caps on. So if my Copic sketch marker weighs below 13 grams, then it's time to fill it. 
I could just guess at how much ink to put into it, but I find that it's so much easier to just use a scale to weigh the marker and keep adding ink until it weighs the right amount, in this case around 14 grams with both caps on. Weighing markers when refilling them eliminates the guesswork, which in my opinion makes the task much easier. Alcohol markers are a wonderful medium to work with, but they do have their limitations. So you should always feel free to combine alcohol markers with other media, like colored pencils, ink pens, gel pens, paint pens, and acrylics, for example. That way, you can take advantage of the specific qualities of other media. For example, here I'm using colored pencils on top of alcohol markers to create subtle shadows and highlights on this leaf. While I could technically use alcohol markers for this, it's just so much easier to use colored pencils here to get the look that I want. Here's another example of how I added paint pens and a white colored pencil on top of a base layer of alcohol markers. If you want to add opaque pops of color on top of your alcohol marker art, then using paint pens, gel pens, or acrylics are all excellent options. If you want to learn step-by-step -step how to color in this butterfly, you can sign up for my free 90-minute butterfly course. I'll post the link below this video. So were these tips useful to you? Let me know in the comments. If you want to keep learning more, check out this video where I show you how to create luminescent blends with alcohol markers. See you there.